This quick screencast is to review membrane transport, the major types of membrane transport. When you're talking about transport through the cell membrane, you can divide it a few ways. You can divide it as to what is being used to cross the membrane, whether that's the phospholipids, the protein, or a vesicle. And you can divide it as to whether the transport is passive or active. And so passive is that energy free process as far as the cell is concerned, no ATP required. You're moving things from high to low concentration, so that's with the gradient. And then there's active transport. This is moving against the concentration gradient, so we're moving from low to high, and this has to have ATP from the cells. Starting with passive transport, simple diffusion is the process of moving small nonpolar molecules through the cell membrane, that's through the phospholipid bilayer. This is often done for gas exchange, so CO2 and O2 are the key things we're talking about moving here. Carbon dioxide and oxygen are constantly being exchanged in the cells of our lungs and in the cells of our blood tissue, especially our red blood cells is what we're talking about here, and the cells that those cells are passing by. Facilitated diffusion is for things that are still moving from low from high to low with their concentration gradient, but they're too large or charged, so things like ions, to move through the membrane because the inside of the phospholipid bilayer are all those nonpolar fatty acid tails. And so these must go through a protein to allow them specific ways into the cell. And there are proteins specific to all different types of molecules that need a way to pass in and out of the cell. We call these channel or carrier proteins. Channel proteins are simply an opening. Carrier proteins bind, but they are all moving things from high to low, and they are all there to move those large or ionic molecules. So these would be things like glucose or amino acids. Osmosis is the diffusion of water. And since I'm putting it in the middle here, because there are aquaporins that are proteins that allow water to pass through the cell membrane very, very easily. But sometimes water is actually small enough, even though it is polar, so it has a slight negative and positive into it, sometimes it can sneak through those fatty acid tails and enter straight through the phospholipids. But it is a type of simple diffusion. It is specifically the diffusion of water. And when we're talking about passive transport, we are not talking about any kind of vesicle movement because that requires the cytoskeleton and the cytoskeleton requires motor proteins and motor proteins require ATP. So moving on to active transport, with active transport we're not talking about any kind of phospholipid movement, but there is movement through a protein and those proteins are called protein pumps. These are the co-transporters and unitransporters that we talked about. And so here, the purpose of active transport is really, you know, why would you be moving things from low to high concentration? Well, because they are scarce or because they're waste and they might be slightly toxic to the cell. So you want to get every possible molecule out or every possible molecule in. So you see this done a lot in our kidneys with glucose and salt recapture. And you also see it in the sodium potassium pumps, which set up an electrochemical gradient for the passage of nerve signals. Very, very important to our bodies. And so we invest energy in these sorts of processes. There's also movement with the vesicles and the motor transport, or the motor proteins and the cytoskeletal proteins that I talked about. This is endo and exocytosis. And so it's using a vesicle to allow things to exit the cell or to allow the bringing in of very large particles often is what we use endocytosis for, specifically phagocytosis, where the 
cell extends pseudopods out and pulls in a very large molecule, sometimes even another cell, like a white blood cell or an amoeba, eating a prokaryotic cell. And so again, this uses the cytoskeleton and the motor proteins to move those vesicles around.